So good day everyone, good day Ma'am Just, I am Angelica Maniscan, the facilitator of Group 5. And let me introduce to you my co-members for this reporting. First, we will have Giselle Love Kipanes, Angeli Sanz, Claire Ryan, Kailin Flowey Ibahay, Rita Marie Vicente, Bina Jean Atol Pilias, Charlene Panisan, and also Abdal Hoyamag. And for today's video, we are going we are assigned to report about divisions from prevailing Filipino values and attitudes that perpetuate GBV and victim blaming under the Filipino concept of kapwa, loob, and the core values. And here's our learning materials. And for today's report, we are expected to explain and discuss the Filipino concept values and attitudes, identify the violence and its factors. Ident identify the values, norms, and cultures that influence as Filipino that gender violence and victim are okay. Nothing good ever comes of violence by Martin Luther King Jr. But before we start our report, sabay-sabay muna natin panoorin ang maikling video about positive Filipino values. Positive Filipino values Bayanihan system or spirit of kinship and camaraderie. A Filipino community spirit and cooperation wherein a group of individuals extends a helping hand without expecting any remuneration. It is characterized by communal work towards one goal exemplified in carrying a nipa house or pushing a passenger jeep. Damayan system. Sympathy for people who lost their loved ones. In case of death of a certain member of a community, the whole community sympathizes with the beavered family. Neighbors, friends, and relatives of the deceased usually give certain amount of money as their way of showing sympathy. Familism or close family relations. The Filipino trait of giving highest importance to family above other things a trait wherein family members should be taken care and supported regardless of whether he or she did something wrong. Family members must be given attention and should not be abandoned. Fun-loving trait A trait found in most Filipinos. A trait that makes them unique, but even in time of calamities and other challenges in life, they always have something to be happy about. A reason to celebrate. Hospitality A Filipino trait of being receptive and generous to guests. Compassionate A Filipino trait of being sympathetic to others, even if the person is a stranger. An example of this is giving alms to beggar. This is observed when we hear Filipinos saying kawawa naman or nakakaawa naman. Regionalism A Filipino trait of giving more priority or preference in giving favors to his province mate before others. Filipinos are friendly A trait found in most of the Filipinos. They are sincere, loyal, kind, and sociable. Flexible or magaling makabagay the ability of Filipinos to ride on or adjust to the norms of other group just to attain smooth and harmonious relationship, just like our OFWs. Religious Most Filipinos possess strong confirmance of their religious belief in action and in words. Respect for Elders a Filipino trait of being courteous both in words and in actions to the older people. Remedio Attitude A Filipino trait of being creative and resourceful, the ability to do things that are next to impossible. Machaga Filipinos renowned for their tenacity and strong determination in every undertaking. These are just a few positive Filipino values. We must not forget to cherish and preserve these good and positive Filipino traits that have embodied who we are as a people. 
as a community and as a nation since the time of our ancestors. The values of utang na loob and respect toward others render a Filipino person with a distinct moral necessity to serve others with a dignity culminating in community relationships. Filipino virtue ethics is founded on two cultural basic notions. Loob is precisely interpreted as inside, however, it is better understood as relational will. While on the second hand is kapwa, which convey as other person, but is properly addressed as together with a person. For us, Filipino, we tend to grow and to know the value and its concepts, but as we live in a current situation, this mixed values and attitudes for being colonized affects and preserve gender-based violence and victim blaming without even us knowing. Values impacts how gender violence is interpreted. Most individuals, they manage it as an unintentional occurrence societies exploit it as a handy justification and systems relate it to stereotypes according to republic act 9262 or the anti-violence against women and their children act of 2004 vow is any act or a series of acts committed by any person against a woman who is his wife former former wife or against a woman with whom a person has or had a sexual or dating relationship or with whom he has a common child or against her child whether legitimate or illegitimate with or without a family abode which result in or, or likely to result a physical sexual psychological harm or suffering or economic abuse including threats and such acts battery assault commission harassment or arbitrary deprivation of liberty Gender-based violence or GBV remains one of the most prevalent and persistent issues facing women and girls in the Philippines, same as victim blaming as well. Violence against women or VAW appears one of the country's pervasive social problems. According to 2017 National Demographic and Health Survey conducted by the Philippine Statistic Authority, one in four Filipino women aged 15 to 49 has experienced physical, emotional, and sexual violence by their husband and partner. Societal norms and traditions dictate people to think that men are the leaders, pursuers, and providers and take on a dominant role in society while women are the nurturers. Men's companionship or companions and supporters and take on the subordinate roles in society. Hence, VAW becomes a form of men's expression of control over women to retain power. Gender-based violence or GBV primary prevention programs seek to facilitate change by addressing the underlying causes and drivers of violence against women and girls at a population level. Social norms are contextually and socially derived collective expectation of appropriate behaviors. Harmful social norms that sustain GBV includes women's sexual purity, protecting family honor over women's safety, safety, and men's authority to discipline women and children. The harmful gender norms is the gender stereotypes are often used to justify violence against women. Cultural norms often dictate that men are aggressive, controlling, and dominant while women are docile, so subservient, and rely on men as providers. In the Philippines, some realities that contribute to the vulnerability of Filipino women to violence against women are being accused as nagger or naggers or neglectful of their duties as wife. That is why are being beaten by their spouses or being raped due to her flirtatious ways. In some instances, feeling for a sexual harassment is interpreted by her employer as being malicious on the, on the appreciation of her good looks. 
So those wives who tend to nag and those as well who forget to do the to do their duties properly are mostly the ones who experience violence against women. Moreover, an even greater problem is the lack of concrete information to show the extent of, of violence against women in the country as many cases of violence against women often go unreported due to women's women victims culture of silence. So women prefers to keep silent rather than voicing out or reporting their concerns. That is why we lack concrete information to show the extent of violence against women. Several government mechanisms have already been put in place to address violence against women. Non-governmental organizations also take part in this crusade. Violence is an extremely complex phenomenon that has its roots in the interaction of many factors, biological, social, cultural, economic, and political, and is mainly caused by unequal power relations. Gender, social inequalities, and inequities are related to many of the risk factors, risk factors of violence, particularly at the societal level. These factors can, ex can worsen other risk factors that create conditions in which violence can thrive. Violence against women is a act of gender-based violence that results in or is likely to result in physical, sexual, or psychological harm or suffering to women, including threat of such acts, coercion or arbitrary deprivations of liberty, whether occurring in public or in private life. So cases due to violence are rampant even from before. The, the most targeted victims are women and girls. So according to the National Demographic and Health Survey uh, conducted by the Philippine Statistics Authority in year 2017, one in four Filipino women ages 15 to 49 years old has experienced physical emotional and sexual violence by their husband or by their partner. Violence against women has always been a tactic by which men maintain control over and exploit women's bodies and labor has been used when women does not comply with the perpetrator's wishes as a means of displacing a man's anger or bolstering staging masculinity. Violence are widely present and the victim blaming are everywhere. People who are using media to spread awareness talk about violence. Uh, we saw uh, awareness being spread in social media platforms uh, to spread awareness. Individual use of words are very powerful to raise issues and trap victims to their spot of darkness while diving into self-regret, doubt, and being helpless to fix their own situation. They are said to be partly responsible for their misfortune. As their situations are blamed upon them, the possibility to survive in violence are too deep to settle. Issues upon gender-based violence and victim blaming are both prominent to address for the welfare and safeness of women and children and to those who are said to be blamed by their own actions to the violence they have gone and been distracted to. Filipino values and attitudes has made prompt judgments that have saved and worsened the situation and had caused malfunctions to every senses a victims have. Vow is deemed to be closely linked with unequal power relations between men and women, otherwise known as gender-based violence. Societal norms and traditions dictate people to think that men are the leaders, pursuers, and providers, and take on the dominant roles in society while women are the nurturers, men's companions, and supporters, and take on the subordinate roles in society. This perception leads men to gain more power over women. Hence, Vow becomes a form of men's expressions of control over women to retain power. Both men and women are victims of gender-based violence, although women bear the brunt of the practice. Men abuse women through battery, use of abusive language, not providing some requirements, and overworking them. Women abuse men by not giving them food, extramarital affairs, and fighting back. 
there are cultural practices and beliefs that perpetuate this gender-based violence, and these include shongo, dowry, polygamy, the notion of household head, male mobility, forced marriage, and not having sex with a woman who is menstruating and during postpartum abstinences, which can force a man to have extramarital sex. Gender-based violence, or GBV, remains one of the most prevalent and persistent issues facing women and girls in the Philippines, same as victim-blaming as well. Violence against women, or VOW, appears as one of the country's pervasive and social problems. The unequal status of men and women is the primary cause of gender-based violence. This inequality includes beliefs that women should be economically dependent on men and that women and children are a man's possessions and under his control. People sometimes explain why a man acted violently by saying he was drunk, jealous, or upset. These excuses may be part of the reason, but they are never the whole story, and they never justify, justify abuse. Some people call these reasons triggers because they can set off a man in a certain situation but they do not cause every man in similar situations to use violence. Male children are not born to be violent. They learn to be violent if they are treated with violence or taught that violence is a proper way to use masculine power. According to the 2017 National Demographic and Health Survey conducted by the Philippine Statistic Authority, one in a four Filipino women aged 15 to 49 has experienced physical, emotional, or sexual violence by their husband or partner. Women can become trapped in the cycle of violence. Breaking themselves out of the cycle is one way to escape it. But for many abused women, living does not seem possible. Women who are abused may have no safe place to go may have no way to provide for themselves and their children outside of the abusive relationships, may be too scared to take advantage of any support that might exist for them and their children, may be brainwashed by their abuser to feel they don't deserve help. One of the causes of gender-based violence, then, is the lack of opportunities for women. By working to develop alternatives to the situations above, your community can prevent women from becoming locked into abusive relationships and the cycle of violence. Vow is deemed to be closely linked with the unequal power relation between women and men, otherwise known as gender-based violence. Considering that Vow, which is which means violence against women, is doing an act that could obviously physically or emotionally hurt women. Thus gender-based Violence or GPV is when someone is mistreated due to his or her biological sex or gender identity. Societal norms and traditions dictate people to think that men are the leaders, pursuers, and providers, and to take on the dominant roles in society, while women are the nurturers, men's companions, and supporters, and take on the subordinate roles in the society. This perception leads men to gain more power over women. So here, for example, um, in family terms, most men believe that women should be submissive unto them since they believe that they are the dominant ones. They believe on, in themselves that they are the one who is striving and working hard, but they don't even know that mother's task is not that easy and obviously difficult. We already know it. Even if we try hard to imitate our mother's household course, we perfectly can't. The society thinks that women can't lead politically, in organizations or even in the field of business. As this practice or norms continues, will the society also adapt or practice downgrading the power or rights of women thinking that the man is a dominant one? Example here at work. Individuals who work to fight against fire are called firemen instead of being called firefighters. Since society thinks that the woman is too weak to do this kind of job, while well, it fits the quality of men. Where in fact, women comprise at least 26% of country's firefighter according to the Bureau of the Fire Protection. Not related to in current politics issue, but some individuals do not vote for a woman, a candidate who is running for a certain position in the government just because they are a female or a woman. Thus, obviously, these perceptions lead men gain more power over women. Victim blaming. 
Victim blaming refers to a practice of questioning what a victim could have done differently in order to prevent crime from happening, thus implying the fault of the crime lies with the victim rather than the perpetrator. One reason people blame a victim is to distance themselves from an unpleasant occurrence and thereby confirm their invulnerability to the risk. People reassure themselves by thinking, because I am not like her, because I do not do that, this would never happen to me. We need to help people understand that this is not a helpful reaction. And that was the end of our report. I hope everyone have learned. Thank you for watching and God bless.